Service to humanity is equivalent to serving God. It includes acts of kindness, compassion, and selflessness towards others. Mr. and Mrs. Wanjao of Utegi Angels, a community-based organization for persons with disabilities, understand this very well, and here is their story. I am uh, a wife uh, to my husband, Jeffrey Wanjao, a high school teacher. I am a mother of three adults and two grandsons. I am proudly an elder Maravind girl, <laughs> born of uh, Mze Murunga and uh, Priscilla Nyokabi from a village called Sabatia. Sabatia is a village of love and there is a book written, uh, ongoing booklet about Sabatia as a village. And uh, I am a ninth born in a family of ten. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately because Everything has a pro and a <laughs> has a negative and a plus. Huh? Um, my, I lost my mother when I was a child, and uh, it was there are challenges that come by losing a mom. I am a happy soul, being well taken care of by everybody that has been part of my journey, and uh, that is why I'm here, happily giving back to the community. I'm the director of Otugi Ages. Back in 2013, under normal circumstances, the way we go visiting people, we came across a family where we met some young children tied behind the house. Again, remembering this is a day year where the sun can be extreme or sometimes it can over rain. I felt what I can do to the society and I decided to, the retro I can, I decided to host that retro boy. From that time, we hosted that one. And then within no time, we had more than 20 need cases. And then from that time, we have been helping them here. We train them on some things they can be able to do for themselves. And at the same time, we try to reconnect them with the family so that the families can accept them the way they are. Because nobody is born with an intention of to be like that, but we are always born without knowing what you are going to become in future. Again, uh, being a teacher, I, I, have, I have been dealing with so many different kids. So by now, when I met these type of people, I'm able to see why we should not condemn that some people are not good academically. We have people born with different abilities. One of the things that uh, I remember as a young child, I grew up um, in a place, in an environment that had a lot of love. And today when I look back into the day-to-day -day life style of the people, I have actually lived in very many towns because when I left, when my mom passed on, I had to move to Embu and uh, later to Isiolo, I have been to Nairobi. I went to different parts of the country in terms of uh, education. And uh, I also experienced the different cultures. Actually being a Kikui born in the land of the Kalenjins, the two gangs since specifically, I can say that uh, it really helped me because uh, I'm able to view life from the diversity of the richness of the culture in our country and uh, it gives me a lot of ease even in raising children from the diverse communities because I know what a culture means for a people and so I'm able to honor people with their cultures and not be judgmental. The center protects in a pool of activities such as bed making that fosters inclusion and diversity. Each and every day they are taught a new skill and then they keep on repeating it now and then so that it, uh, they internalize it because to them their main abilities is the hard on not really the mental and i think that way if we take them even back to their families they can be able to be appreciated some of their parents do, pro, do continue with that activity 
And although some of them will just take the kid and forget about everything, and then later you can go and uh, meet the same, same boy somewhere abandoned again in the society. But the major ones whom we are dealing with, apart from this, we have mothers who give birth to children with disabilities. They are taught on how to do these things. And although they are there at home, they can be able maybe to make some detergents, make those ornaments, and they can even sit along the road and they will get the customers. Because the DRC Rit Center to take care of our total. So far, we have four years to come here. We have a lot of innovation. We have to innovate and we have skills. We have to show up, we have to show up mat, we have to show up beads, we have to show up earrings, we have to show up earrings. When we got married 26 years ago, we have always done this. We have always given back to the community. For both of us, we had lost our parents when we were young, our mothers. So our fathers were the main figures in our lives. And uh, it, has, it, also brought, it also gives us an opportunity to understand each other very much. And so it was very easy to give back to people who are in need. And uh, we found ourselves helping and helping, but we didn't know that there are rules of helping. So we were just helping. So at a point we knew that you're supposed to do a registration. And uh, that is where, how we registered it now in 2013, 14th May. And uh, after that, uh, we, we continued helping. But in 2015, it really, the need was huge. And there was an overflow of uh, children here. And uh, that's how we started looking at the need in a di different way. There are people who needed more than just what you were helping, maybe giving them food or offering something. There are people who really needed to be in the safe space. But I didn't know it would run to my old age. I later worked in a hospital, and an orthopedic hospital, where I interacted a lot with people with disabilities. And I found myself like we were getting attached very fast. And um, it brought that, that aspect of like they are feeling comfortable in my presence or telling me their problems. And little did I know that it would grow to a big thing <laughs> later in my life. But I am happy to have been married to Jeffrey because he has been of support. And he's actually, a lot of people look at me as a dream career, but he's the one who said, if at all we cannot raise our children away, if that is not what you want, we'll also raise these ones where we are, so that they may have a father and they may have a mother. Both of us had um, a missing mother, so it was easier to give them the two. <laughs> and that is what we are offering as a family. Martha outlines the importance of a support system as she gives much credit to her family. The, there's a way that God works with his children, and I look at uh, Otugi Angels as God's own. And uh, when uh, God called me to this course, he told me he's going to be present through, and he has been. Looking down 10 years down the line after registration and through my life uh, when I have been serving, actually even when I was a student, I remember one time I, I had rescued a child from the streets of Isiolo. I was a child, but I was able to advocate for another child. And uh, it has been a journey filled with so much love so much care, God's presence, and that is enough. We have come a journey that uh, we can only say that it has been God, yes. And uh, I would also say that my family has also been very supportive. You Sometimes when I find family members coming in to support, or they tell me, my sister, where can we come in? And can we buy uniform or can we do this? And friends, they are, they are also families that have embraced us. So they know that they can call in to ask, what can I do for you? It feels very nice. We are not alone. We have an organization that supports us with around 20,000 per month. It has supported us. We don't know when it's going to pull off, but it has supported us for like three years for therapeutic, 
for, for, for services, for therapy services. So whoever comes in and does therapy, that is what they have paid from that kitty. And uh, it has been of support because we can say that um, it, is, it, it has been a journey that can only be seen. It's only God who can take credit, not even me as the founder. Because maybe I have given the space, somebody else has come for transformative activities, somebody else is cooking, you see like the Muse who is cooking them. Uh, my husband is purchasing some of these things, paying the bills. Uh, somebody else coming to give their free service, somebody else coming in to wash. You see, it's a combination that I cannot also explain. I don't, I don't have, I cannot count that I am good enough to attract people to come and help th that much. It's only God who can touch their hearts to enable them to come in. My specific role mostly is I act as their father. In fact, all the time they call me daddy. So I feel I'm their father and I deal with them with the role of the father. When you, you know a family without a father, even directing them, they might do something which is not very right. But when they see you as the father, when somebody does something good and then you are coming home, and you meet them running towards to you to show you this is what I have been doing today. I have done this, I have done that. I trained this one to do this. I feel so happy and so proud. And in fact, majority of them, they don't even want to leave. But since they are not my biological children, automatically we have to let them go. And some of them, when they go, we go, we try to follow them now and then to see whether they are moving on or they are just abandoned. Although we have that major problem of when the parents or when we trace their parents, some of them, you meet Yure Mzazi and Amchukuo Mtoto Tena Naenda Natupa in another different town. Though living in the present, there are a number of plans for the future that the centre is working towards. We have big dreams and uh, the dreams look so huge compared to ourselves but there's no big dream in the eyes of God. And one day you can see we have put our future on the board. <laughs> we have, we have our, everything, we have a strategic plan that is doing well, we can't complain. You see like um, we launched it this year on 3rd of June, so six months down into it we are happy. You can see our smiles. So we know that someday we're going to achieve because God, God is not man. He's going to enable a lot to happen because he knows, for me, I'm a mother of adults and I'm not just doing it for myself. I am doing it for a whole lot of people that are yet to be born. So God must honor that. I know God has been faithful. He'll continue being faithful until that dream that we have put there as our future be fulfilled. Because we have to speak for those that are speechless. They may not speak, but that's how we are here, to be able to speak, to be loud enough for them. And uh, who is God? He's not measurable. Yeah, the dream looks so big. Actually, several people have told me, this is so big, why and you're like this? I tell them, there's no big dream. It's not big, it is enough. Because when God gave you this, this plan, he knew how it's going to happen. I may not know, but he knows. One thing I know is that it's gonna be fulfilled. It requires millions and millions of money. <laughs> You'd ask someone who doesn't have a thousand, is dreaming of millions and billions of money. But uh, there is a way, because we have a strategic plan and we have enlisted our needs. So if you ask me today, what do you want? I will give you a list of things and the costs, our strategic options, and also our operational needs. We have it. So if you wish to support us, we are, it is clear which area you are supporting. Are you coming to support the therapy space? Or are you coming to, you know people also have different hearts. Are you coming to, to support the food security? Are you coming in to support the running of the safe house? Because even hygiene and sanitation is a big deal in terms of, it's a heavy cost in terms of service to disability. 
are you coming to sort the issue of industries? We are ready and we have our paperwork well done. So if you have to choose something worth 1,000, it's still on the list. You can come and say, I have the capacity of this ticket. So within five years, who is God? God is not, cannot be measured. We can, <laughs> and we are going to manage. I mean, in peace, I'm going to pick you up with Jana. I'm going to pick you up with Jana. Na bado tunataendelea kwa sababu ni kazi ambao inahitaji uwe na utu ndani yako. Ukijua tu ya kwamba hata yule ambayo yuko pale unapikia sio kupenda kwake wewe vile. Ni Mwenyezi Mungu ndio ajuaye. Sasa kwa hivyo inahitaji unakuwa na hekima ukiwafanyia kazi na wazuri. Ah hao kwa sababu tumekaa nao sana. Na hao na ubaya wote na Mungu ndio amewabariki akawapa hiyo roho nzuri ya kuchukua vijana na kuwaleta hapa wawe wakiwarisha with the existence of such projects that add value to society success stories cannot go unnoticed there are also cases where like i found someone on the streets huh? and uh, they, because they are not able to express but i kept uh, listening to what they were saying but i realized there was one this one word that was really repeated naitiri naitiri so I went and Googled and found that Naitiri is a place, actually in Kenya. And uh, that way we are able to, to, to trace the local administration in Naitiri because I found that that uh, boy would die on the street and the family would all forever be looking for the person. So I requested whether they could allow, I would commit myself to be able to transport him to the other side to enable, to enable, maybe the family would know, even if he, he looked like he would die any time. But he didn't die, he's still alive. <laughs> uh, he, so we, we requested that uh, he, he would rather be in the vicinity of the name that he's mentioning. So that in case anything happens, even during the burial, they could, they could uh, know that uh, that is a person belonging to a certain family. But coincidentally, when we went there, we used the motorbike, we went with the children officer, the police uh, from Tigoni, we were located, uh, the security. And uh, we found uh, the people in, with the motorbike, it is a motorbike. We were able to dialogue and they kept telling us, they kept directing us to the, the nearest place. So we arrived at Naitiri and we arrived at uh, the local chief's camp eh? and we were able to be allocated. We presented the child to see whether anybody can know them at the chief's place. And one man said, is that not the boy who got lost? from this family and we were able to be given them Zewanyu Bakumi who went to take us to that family and they stamped that it was where he belonged. Evidently, everyone has a calling that can only be realized by working at the right channels. Let us all therefore work for the betterment of those around us. My dream is big. We have the seven, we have the seven services and uh, whether you are interested in supporting therapy or uh, industries or dialogue, or uh, family strengthening outreach services, the Sirit Center or the Education Center, which is uh, an innovation center. Whether you, uh, you are uh, interested in uh, supporting the safe house, or the Utuginjo safe shelter, any of the area that you feel, all, all the sanctuary therapy services, any of the areas that you feel that you're interested in and you could support. You're so much welcome to support, to, to support Utugi Angels. We will be glad to achieving together with you. And uh, we know that you can only do this with love, here. As long as you're supporting Otugi, wewe ujipende. And uh, you'll actually receive the blessing, because whatever is done out of love has also blessings that comes by it. May God bless you and continue supporting these kind of things. And any time you go and meet, some kids abandoned somewhere, please be the sound of the society, be the sound of the God, to tell these people, don't condemn. Please rift this person. This person, God created him or her for a certain purpose. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm
We are on we are on social media. We are uh, Otugi Angels Community. You'll find us. We have a website, otugiangelscommunity.org. We have uh, the we are on social media as Otugi Angels Community. Whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the pages, even TikTok, you'll find us as Otugi Angels Community. If you want to support us, you can get to our website and see how you could support us. Uh, we have uh, our accounts there. And also for anybody wishing to support us, you could deposit to Family Bank Limuru Branch 047-00003706. And also you could impress her on 0723-296-845. and you'll find Martha.